Hi folks, I'm Father Joe Grimaldi, and you can call me Joe, and I'd like to welcome you to my podcast. But now, here's our host and friend, Ken Calvert. Hi everybody, I'm Ken Calvert alongside Father Joe Grimaldi, and we would like to welcome you to the Father Joe Grimaldi podcast. Well, this one is just for the friends of the Father Joe Grimaldi podcast. Going on right now at Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln, you can enjoy the opportunity to build your Lincoln. That's right. Visit our showroom in Southfield, Michigan, or simply log on to StarLincoln.com. You can build your Lincoln Corsair. How about a Nautilus, the Aviator, or the beautiful navigator experience the power of sanctuary in your custom ordered lincoln vehicle you pick the color the interior the wheels and you can choose between gas or your plug-in hybrid the benefits that come from owning a lincoln certified pre-owned vehicle will exceed your expectations Hoot and McInerney Star Lincoln, located on 12 Mile Road, just east of Telegraph, in beautiful Southfield. Or you can always visit us at StarLincoln.com. Star Lincoln, home of the Father Joe Star Treatment. I would like to start, and I'm sure you'll join me in this, our prayers and support continue to go out to the people of Ukraine as this war continues and we can only pray that calmer minds prevail at some point and this will all come to an end soon and with the least amount of casualties of destruction and, and destruction and uh, speaking of that apparently the ukraine embassy has learned that putin and the russian army have plans to possibly destroy the cathedral of saint sophia which is what they consider a unesco heritage site the Archbishop has, not ours, theirs, okay, has put out a plea to please save this special building or icon for us and please save that. But he pleads with the Russian people to save that particular structure. And if you look at it, it's absolutely stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah regaled in gold yeah and just these various sanctuaries that are just stunning gorgeous and you would think but who knows who knows we we pray for the sanity of the person currently in charge of russia and hope that, that at some point this all ends Gosh, we've been through a lot, haven't we, over the past three years? It's been crazy, and of course they're speaking again today, but only God knows what is going to come out of it soon. Yeah, and again, we have to remind people that as you listen to these podcasts, things could have gotten much worse and they could have gotten much better. We don't know for sure. Yeah, We certainly know that it's the Lenten season, and it's certainly a time for prayer and fasting and also for reaching out for those that need us most, and now... Certainly, we've touched all the bases there in terms of what we can do for support. But that aside, we can finally possibly take most of the COVID out of our religious services. I would hope you have noticed a difference at the Sacred Heart. It appears to me that our churches have been able to get back to some sort of normal, given the relief that we're getting from Omicron, Delta, and COVID-19 as we saw it a year ago exactly, and how it was just beginning two years ago. What is the state of the church right now for you? I don't know if we're an anomaly or something, but it's good. (laughs) Now, don't forget, I've only been there six months, so I can't speak to what happened last year. But right now, there doesn't seem to be any difference, okay? It doesn't seem to be a big concern. I don't know why. I'm not a scientist, so I can't figure it out. Well, you play one, though, on on TV. I know that I enjoy your program each and every night. (laughs) The Professor Joe Grimaldi program. So uh, how can I, what can I do differently? Uh, Lent 2022 that I haven't done in my some 70 years. What is what do you direct me to do, Father Joe Grimaldi? Okay, what, what I would direct you to do is what I direct me to do. I like you, so you know, I'm going to like this. I don't know about that. There's, there you got to look at this certain weaknesses that we all have. If we try to tackle everything that we don't like about ourselves, 
it's not going to work so easily because we'll get frustrated. You can't make things better everywhere. But if we pick out one particular foible or one particular fault and work on that, that would be a tremendous victory by the end of the Lenten season. But I think it's a time for remodeling if you want, but remodeling just certain aspects of our lives. Trying to do the whole thing ain't gonna work, as they say, okay? Mm -hmm. It's gotta be some specific area where we can see some progress as we go along. Remodeling is a great way, that's a great expression, and it's so easy to understand. So take on the mission of remodeling those areas of my life. Yeah. I need a little fixing upping. <laughs> you got it. That's what it is. <laughs> fixing upping doesn't, well, I'm going to leave it in anyway. But I like it. A little bit of fixing upping. I can use a little remodeling in, then again, I don't want to take on too much. If I compare it to my house as a model, I'm not even remotely close to being able to remodel my bath. I have to leave that to someone else. In the metaphor that I just drew, who do I leave that to? Do I leave it to meditation and pray that I can remodel that part of my my life that resembles the, the, the bath? Well, let me put it this way. We never stop trying to get better, okay? So mm -hmm. that's something that we will work on as long as we live. But I think in order to try to make some progress that you could see, you have to pick an area where you could see the progress. Because if you try to do everything at once, it's overwhelming, and mm -hmm. you don't seem to accomplish anything, and then you easily give up. There's no question. But I think if you take a certain amount of time with a specific area of our lives, well, I think we can see the results with time. What area of life are you or have you considered remodeling? Well, let me put it this way. Every person has personal, uh, really personal areas of their lives to work on, whether it be my relationship with people that I don't like, for example. Mm -hmm. If we're going to get examples, I think that's a good one. I think it's a very we good one. We avoid people we don't like. Forgiveness is a big thing, huh? noticing the Lazaruses in our lives, too. You know, the Lazarus at the gate, the guy who's begging on the corner. We all have Lazaruses that we like to shun. We turn our heads when we go by. We just don't like to deal with that kind of thing. With good reasons sometimes, but other times not such good reasons. When I say with good reasons, you always hear of the bellboy at the hotel making maybe 150000 a year just by collecting a few tips here and there. A few. I'm exaggerating. Yeah. Huh? yeah. But by the same token, there are people that don't even make enough to eat, and yet we don't distinguish the two. Huh? And I mm -hmm. think the Lazarus I, in my mind is a good example because he's there. We all have a Lazarus at the at the gate, but it's just noticing who that Lazarus is or what he is and how do we deal with it. Forgiveness, oh, one of the things that's so difficult. You look at brothers not talking to brothers, sisters not talking to sisters. Over what? Only God knows. They probably don't even remember what it was that caused the rift. But there is a definite rift. And boy, do we stay away of trying to mend that situation and yet we're urged as Christians to try to mend that situation at least to live civilly with these other people whoever they may be instead of just ignoring them and so on you don't want to be like those people in the supermarket that kind of get a glimpse of somebody in one aisle and run to the next so that <laughs> they could avoid not seeing that person. They don't want to talk to that person. Guilty. So I think things of that sort that I think we all need to do a little bit of refining mm -hmm. in our lives. Well, I, I've been guilty of that, but that's only because of the fact that I've been in a hurry or the way that I perceive myself to have 
looked that day. To a like, sibling. Oh, you yeah. mean... No, no, no. I'm going to pull one out of my medical bag here as well and suggest that perhaps you don't start any sentence with, I'm only calling you to say hello because it's Lent and I was told I should do something nice today. <laughs> don't do that. No, um, no. In other words, if you have a sibling that you haven't talked to in a while, don't just call up and say, Hi, Bob, I'm only doing this because today our pastor decided that we should be working on things during Lent. So here goes. How you doing, Bob? <laughs> don't do that. That's not a good one, but I like that. So we're remodeling our bodies, our souls, and the things that we can do with our own lives. We're remodeling our lives We've worked on a couple of things. Do you have any others that... that I, then something comes to mind that I think is funny, is hilarious. Years ago, you know, here we were in religious life, and we would take a trip somewhere, and there'd be 30 of us. Well, the superior would say, okay, we're going to be on the bus. I would like you to sit next to somebody you dislike. Now, how does that make the person <laughs> feel? Oh, <wow>. And so... <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh at that. Somebody you dislike. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, it's um, whatever penance we choose. That's great. That's we should. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and I would just nudge my buddy and I'd say, go with it, okay? Yeah. Sit next to me. <laughs> sure. Act sure. like you and I have never talked before, okay? <laughs> go ahead. No, I, I'm in agreement with you. I think it's a funny situation to find yourself in. So. What about there are things going on within the archdiocese? There's a number of events and various ways of drawing the family together and then the family in the evening, perhaps, into prayer, emphasizing the fact that there is this period of Lent that we really should sort of embrace at a younger age. And uh, I mean, they've even gotten, I wouldn't like to use the word clever about it, but there are puzzles available for the family to work on each and every night that have to do with Lent. Uh And I think those are... You know, let's not, you know, in other words, like every night at 6 o'clock, we're going to have dinner, and then we'll immediately sit down, and for the next 45 minutes, we're going to work on the Lenten puzzle. Well, no, I mean, but just you spend a little bit of time with it, and you leave, you turn off the cell phones, and you just sort of, as a family, work on this puzzle. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, the three elements of Lent that are very important is prayer, fasting, mm-hmm. and almsgiving. Right. Now, one of the things to include little kids is getting, for example, a special envelope that kids could put in their own money in and then on Sunday put it in the basket. Yep. It's a way of training the young people to know that we're all supposed to do some almsgiving. And so that's a good way of, in my mind, it's a good way of showing people that they could do this kind of thing. I think it's something that's palatable. Matter of fact, they may even get a big kick out of it. Every little kid loves the idea of reaching into the basket and throwing their money into the basket. Prayer, as I said before, is very important during Lent. And, of course, we don't understand what something is about in our religion. Clarify it. Talk to somebody who knows. Try to find answers to these things. Don't go on living with uncertainty about what your religion is all about. I think this is something we all have to work on. If you have doubts about some of the things in our religion, ask about them. Ask people that know. Also, try to find friends, spouses, people that you know well that will be honest with you and point things out to you that maybe will challenge you. And I think this is something that we have to look out for. A good example, of course, is a husband and wife, because usually they can tell the truth to each other. We want to hear the truth. We don't want somebody telling us, oh, you're such a wonderful person. (laughs) I mean, there's nothing that you possibly can do wrong and all of this. No, point out what's actually happening And I think it'll allow us, if we are the recipients of that, to be able to mend our lives in those areas. Otherwise, we could go on with our lives without realizing that we have to mend anything. Mm -hmm. But we do. We're human beings. 
so we're going to fail. I think we we still need to talk about the other component of Lent, and that being fast. Do you agree with fasting, something, giving up something? Uh, well, I was telling the people today that prayer and fasting for the people of the Ukraine is a wonderful thing to do today, yes. As far as Lent is concerned, there are two elements, fasting and abstinence. Abstinence is something that all of us are obliged to do. And it's Good Friday, and then each Friday of Lent, we're supposed to try to stay away from meat. Mm. But fasting, well, it's over the age of seven until the age of 59. And that's when we are required to fast. So fasting, all those people that have the strength to do it should do it. That's why they stop it at age 59. They somehow think that 60 is old, which is, I don't think of it as old, but anyway. Yeah. So between 7 and 60, you're supposed to be able to fast. You're not obliged to fast otherwise. But abstinence, yes, we're all supposed to abstain from meat. And the other thing, too, I want to mention concerning what you just said, we have to make resolutions that are reachable. If we do, let's say, I'm going to visit my grandmother who's in a nursing home, I'm going to visit her every Tuesday of the year, and then we don't. What does that do to the grandmother? Okay. So I think you have to make resolutions that are reachable. We don't want to go beyond that. Have a Lenten prayer, my good friend. Obviously, we're living in very challenging times, so let's pray for the strength to deal with the challenging times. We pray for your love and compassion to abound as we walk through this challenging season. We ask for wisdom for those who bear the load of making decisions with widespread consequences. We pray for those who are suffering with sickness and all who are caring for them. We pray for misinformation to be curbed that fear may take no hold in hearts and minds. And as we exercise the good sense that you in your mercy provide, May we also approach each day in faith and peace, trusting in the truth of your goodness towards us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let there be peace on earth. God bless you all. This is Father Joe Grimaldi, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the Father Joe Podcast. If you'd like, you can email us. It's F-R-J-O-E. P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. That's F-R-J-O-E-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook. Simply search Father Joe Grimaldi. And thanks for listening, everyone.